Hello and welcome to Animate Tutorial Bone Tool. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to go and start a new Flash project. So we're going to go New and we have our open dialog box. So our resolution for this is going to be 1920 by 1080 and we're going to be working at 12 frames a second. <coughs> Okay, we can just choose one of these templates here, the Action Script 3.0, and I click OK. So now we have our stage area, and we're going to be experimenting with the bone tool. So the bone tool basically creates an armature that you can then pose and move around and animate with. Okay, so in animation world, an armature is a skeleton, and just like we have skeletons in our bodies, the skeleton helps us be able to stand up and to move into different positions. And in animation, an armature is used to pose um, different positions, and animate can help you tween between those different positions and cut down on some of your animation work. What I'm going to do here, just to demo it, is draw um, a character, but just with the paintbrush and one color, so not with lines and fills and layers and details. Okay, so this I'm going to name up here in layer one as snake. Now I'm going to choose a snake because it's a simple kind of shape to work with. So. And draw my head. Fill it in with the paint bucket tool, the same color. Okay, so what we're going to do is select the bone tool, which is over here in the tools. So you can see that little bone icon. And for this, what we're going to do is choose an anchor point. So the first um, bone that you lay down, or the first joint that you lay down, will by default become the anchor. So it's where you can pivot the whole character on or move it around on. So um, I always kind of feel like putting it straight here on the head, but then that means that head becomes the pivot point. So what I'm going to do here is actually start it just in the middle of the body over here. What I'm going to do is hold down the mouse or the pen and drag and then drop to create another joint. So now we've got a line that, that goes from first point to now my second point. And you'll notice that what it did, as soon as I laid down a bone, is it put it as a selected area, a bit like it does with a symbol inside a blue box. And up here in the layers, it's created an armature. So it's actually taken what was on the snake layer, because now the snake layer is empty, and it's put it into this armature. So it's the way it's trying to understand what we're doing. It's going to say, oh, okay, you're making an armature. I'm going to put that all on one layer, and this is going to be the, its own little entity. Oh, so, so if we did multiple layers, it compressed it? Yes, okay. and that's where it gets a bit complicated. Um, which is why I'm starting with a very simple shape that only really needs one layer. So then what we can do is put in another joint, put in another joint, put in another one. So you should be able just to click and hold on one and allow you to drag out to an additional, po an additional point. So now you should be able to grab one of the points and drag it around and you see how it's dragging and pivoting on that first point that I put in. So you should be able to drag from any one of these bones except the, the anchor and 
get it to move. What we can do is go, let's say that we want this a little bit of animation to go for two seconds, so that's 24 frames. So I've selected the 24th frame up here on the timeline and tap F6 to insert a keyframe. And you can see it's kind of colored green when you use the armature tool. So a little bit different to when we use our classic team where we have blue and we have a blue arrow. But it's basically saying, okay, this is a pose, number one. And number 24 is also a pose. So you just, like you do when you set up a tween, you just say, this is where I want you to be at the 24th frame. So you're basically creating keyframes with movement in between. And now it should, yeah, move between those two poses. <laughs> Called this one person. Let's see what I can do if we were to animate something a humanoid type figure. Right, let's see how the bone tool works on this character. So I am going to grab the bone tool. I'm going to make the anchor point the chest area here. That's where I'm going to start. I'm going to go out to the shoulders on both sides. And now we just hope for the best and we see how well it's going to work. Oh. Oh, it doesn't? That gun's really a problem. So you can see what's done here. It thinks those two things are connected. But you have to make your own, like another. Well, it's in my picture, it's just too close, so it doesn't really understand that um, it doesn't have to move that as well. Remove armature. Now, I've removed the armature. Try again. Okay, it's not bad. It's a weird thing under the arm here. We are going to work with the bone tool, this time though with symbols. So what we're going to do now is create basically a puppet, but instead of doing it all with one fill and one layer, we're going to create it with different parts and then we're going to connect all those parts up with the bone tool. So this is what you do if you want to do something a bit more sophisticated, a bit more detailed, that doesn't have some of those issues that we saw for um, the last demo. And this also means you can have more line work, colors, and a whole lot of other things. 
So what I'm going to do is start with my head this time. Okay, so this is one layer. This is actually the head I started with. So these are the steps you need to follow. So you can go as fast or slow as you like, but basically once you've completed one of the parts, select it, modify, convert to symbol. And this is going to be called Head. Okay, so we have one symbol called head on a layer called head. And if you go to your library panel over here, you should see the head turn up in the library. So next step is lock that layer and create a new layer. We're going to call this one neck. So it doesn't really matter what you want to draw, how you want to do it. The important steps are putting them on different layers and making them symbols. Okay. So probably where you might find a problem later is you forget to start a new layer or you forget to save it as a different symbol and you start getting two parts as one symbol. It means you can't um, animate them individually. That's where you'll have issues. Okay, so I'm just going to make that transparent by clicking on the little transparency icon and I'm going to draw my neck. So it's good with these parts when you design them is have a little bit of overlap. Okay, reason being you want a little bit that you can connect the joint to that can be hidden that it can rotate on. Okay, so if you have it just straight up against it without any overlap what happens when <clears throat> you change the angle is you'll see a gap.
Just make sure they're all unlocked up here. Okay. So all your layers are there. They're all unlocked. And this is the tricky part where you take the bone tool, so select bone tool, and what you want to do is kind of just plan it out, take your time, go through and connect up the body. So I want the first point to be right in the torso on the body, and that's because it becomes the first anchor point that everything's anchored to. I don't want that to be the head because then it'll pivot around on the head and look weird. So what I'm going to do is about here where the heart is, is where I'm going to create my first point. What I'm going to do is drag that first point up and try and connect it onto the neck. Okay, so it found the neck there and it's connected it to the neck. Don't worry if it's now come uh, in front of the body, we can fix that. Then drag up and put to the head. There we go, so it's connected to the head. Now you can only have one point per symbol. You can't have two points per symbol. That's, this is the limitation again of this technique. So it means I kind of need to plan it out because I can't have multiple joints for one symbol. So if I now drag, I'm going to see if I can get this shoulder that's in there. Okay, there's the shoulder. I've connected to the shoulder. It's popped out, that's all right. Um, then I'm going to go to the forearm here. Then I'm going to go to the, sorry, that was the upper arm. Then I go to the forearm. Then I'm going to go to the hand. Okay. So let's try the other one then. Let's see if we can get that shoulder. There we go. There we go. Then grab your selection tool and have a bit of a play with it. See how it works. It's actually not too bad, these legs. You can see, I can imagine if I took a bit of time with it, I could get some poses that didn't look too weird. 